who is the Sea Shepherd Foundation and what is it that they do that makes them so unpopular with certain countries? Find out more after this break. It is precisely these dramatic measures that make Sea Shepherd very unpopular in some circles, but heroes in others. A few weeks ago, the world witnessed one of the most intense demonstrations in recent times. A war waged in the Southern Ocean, activists versus the Japanese whalers. These scenes may seem reminiscent of days gone by, when whales were being slaughtered in large numbers, but this was recorded in the past two months. This boat, the Fali Moet, belongs to Sea Shepherd, now docked in Cape Town, after it returned from its anti-whaling campaign in Antarctica. They make waves wherever they go, a small yet very committed marine protection organization that have a formidable reputation, even making our port's authorities nervous. This and other boats in their fleet patrol the oceans in search of illegal fishing activities. They see themselves as the law enforcers of the high seas and have a very direct approach when dealing with alleged offenders. The man who started all this is Captain Paul Watson. I set the uh, Sea Shepherd Conservation Society up in 1977 uh, because I felt there was a need for an organization to intervene against illegal activities. Uh, Greenpeace was a protest organization and I really wasn't into protesting, I was really wanting to intervene and the laws were there. Greenpeace arrived in Cape Town a week after Sea Shepherd with their two ships, Esperanza and the Arctic Sunrise. They were also in Antarctica trying to stop the Japanese whaling boats adopting a less confrontational approach. For us, non-violent direct action is an absolute core principle for us. We've been practicing that for 35 years since the organization was first established. And our reputation for peaceful action is so important to us. Uh, the Sea Shepherds have a different interpretation of that, uh, and so that's why we chose to work independently for them. We are a non-violent organization. Um, I guess the way I see it is if someone has a rifle in their hand and they're about to shoot somebody, it is an act of non-violence to tear that rifle out of their hand and break that rifle across your knee. I think standing by passively and watching is an act of violence. I think that's complacency in that act of violence. Both organizations have the same goals. That is to halt what they consider to be atrocities committed against the environment. And in this case, their focus was whaling in Antarctica. Yeah, I started on Sea Shepherd. Uh, I really liked uh, what the organization was doing for the ocean and I decided to join and I ended up being the only South African to be on board in the history of any Sea, sea Shepherd campaign. And it's been 45 days that I've spent on that ship and it has become my new home. He is now one of 40 volunteers from 12 countries that keep the Farley Moet steaming ahead. But it's not all just plain sailing. Living quarters are cramped, and there's only one shower and two toilets for the entire crew. Some people didn't even have cabins. They had to sleep in, like, um, the secondhand clothes locker and um, just kind of little nooks around the ship. Pictures on board are a constant reminder to them why they are there. Uh, this is a vegan ship. We only use vegan food. I've never been hungry once, and I've never complained about the food as well. It's a, it's a, great, it's a great kitchen. The mission was to go save whales, and I've been wanting to do this all my life. I've been an activist for, for most of my life. I've always been aware of our world and our conservation um, practices. On the 10th of December, the Fani Moet, an aging 50-year-old war relic named after the Canadian environmental novelist, chugged out of Melbourne Harbour with a top speed of 10 knots. Their mission? intervene and stop whaling in the Antarctic whale sanctuary by whatever means, even using force if necessary. Uh, we don't shy away from destroying illegal property and this organization has sunk 10 illegal whaling ships in the past and that's why the Japanese are afraid of us but uh, the captain who's captained this boat for almost 30 years now has never been convicted of a felony. What Sea Shepherd does is we act under what's called the United Nations Charter for Nature and that states very clearly that any individual, private organization and or nation state has the right to uphold international conservation law. About the same time as they left Australia, two Greenpeace boats departed from Cape Town, also heading for the Antarctic. The larger of their two ships, the Esperanza, 
which can cruise at 17 knots, should get there first. What frustrates them is that most governments have laws in place to protect marine resources, but very few actually monitor their own conservation areas. Some even turn a blind eye when laws are blatantly ignored. Many won't intervene as they fear their actions might cause an international incident and upset lucrative economic pacts. The Southern Ocean surrounding the Antarctic is a declared whale sanctuary, so it's illegal to kill whales within its boundaries. Yet Japanese whalers return every year and slaughter hundreds. The problem is that year after year, the Japanese whaling fleet goes down to Antarctica and violates that. Uh, just this year, they've doubled their quota of minke whales to 935. And when it gets to that point, protesting isn't enough. And that's when an organization like Sea Shepherd is absolutely necessary. The Southern Ocean is a vast and hostile place. On their previous Antarctic mission, the Fani Moet failed to find the Japanese whaling fleet altogether. But this time, it is different. On Christmas morning, the Japanese factory ship, the Nishin Maru, appeared on their radar screen. By luck, we sailed straight into the Japanese um, mothership with the Greenpeace ship, the Esperanza. The whalers didn't respond to the approaching ships and continued processing the whale carcasses. They must have thought we were the Arctic sunrise of the Greenpeace ship. Greenpeace obviously do not worry the whalers much as they quite openly continued their gruesome business. They also came well prepared to meet any protesters. Well, I think they feel very confident, you know, they've defied 